welcome back to my youtube channel i thought i should take advantage of the sun because i actually didn't want to use my my light from my ring light hopefully the light can help me on this video but if you don't already know my name is Asuka Ramela and on this channel it's all about learning growth and contribution so today i thought would be a perfect time to talk about my experience in a corporate world now um i've been working since 2020 and I'm en route to becoming a chartered accountant. And basically, as I've explained in my first video, is that it's a three-year degree. You do your postgraduate diploma, and then you do your three years of articles, including your two board exams, and then you qualify um, after your training firm has given you the go-ahead and declared you competent. And that is how you become a chartered accountant. So I'm basically in that process, and I'm in my last year of articles, and I thought, if I could just give you perspective as to what my experience has been like. So I started working in the year 2020 and that was literally one year after my daughter was born. And I think the biggest thing when I came into corporate is I thought I had to like release myself of being a mom. I thought to myself, I've watched Suits, I've watched The Accountant, I've watched all these movies that require you to be like in a suit and tie and everything else. And I just knew that I couldn't stay with my daughter. So the first thing that came to my mind when I started working was that I had to not live with my daughter because I already kind of reconciled the fact that time was not going to be something that I would have much of. So my daughter is currently living with my in-laws even now because of the fact that um, time is not your friend in corporate. So that is the first lesson about working in corporate or the first point of view of working in corporate. Time is something that gets away from you so quickly. Um, you make a lot of sacrifices, just like any other profession, to make sure that you are 100% there in your qualification. But at the same time, it doesn't make it easier when you have to make all these like big sacrifices, like not like me not seeing my daughter every day but it is what it is, right? Um, the second thing was that I was working in the beginning of COVID. And what we do requires us to be amongst each other. Like we work in teams, we work with different managers on different jobs. And so having to be home and not work in a team was extremely overwhelming. Like the first thing was I didn't understand how the systems worked. I, for the life of me, have never thought about learning Excel, only to find out that Excel is your friend <laughs> in a corporate world. So if you're watching this and you don't know Excel, YouTube is a great platform for you to start learning some shortcuts, some, you know, <laughs> because I didn't know anything. I had never opened Excel in my entire life. I knew it existed, but my plan was never to open it. And now that I was alone and having no one to like help me out, I spend more time trying to figure out the basics, like how to operate Excel. And it was kind of conflicting how I was learning the audit um, side of things. Even though I had the theory, the practical obviously is quite different and it comes with experience, right? So I would suggest that if you don't know Excel, now is a great time to go learn Excel. The third thing that I kind of experienced being in third year was um, in first year in 2020 was it was my first salary right and it was my first income my first smell of money and I finally understood the value of a rand at first I think I was living very blase I don't want to lie and say I'm a spoiled child or like you know my parents might say otherwise but I don't believe I was spoiled but I really didn't understand the value of a rand. And I think trainees or young professionals, when they start working, my blazer, they are going in, they are buying cars, they are moving out of home, they are buying clothes, they are changing their lifestyle. Why? I don't understand because things are so expensive. Like for me at that time, I was living with my fiance. So living away from home was like non-negotiable if i can put it like that or it wouldn't make sense but if you're a young professional and there is no immediate reason for you to move out do not put pressure on yourself to want this independence because rent is not cheap food is not cheap 
nothing is cheap in the streets right so if your parents are not forcing you to move out if there's no immediate reason for you to move out of home don't try and push it too much to a point where now you are living a very critical life because you wanted to be independent like save up as much money as you can and that brings me to a most important point saving in 2020 covid hit us so hard and lockdown level five i'm pretty sure everybody knows level five in south africa meant you could not do anything like you were staying at home all you could do is go and buy your groceries and come back home and there was literally nothing else for you to do what did that mean for me it meant that i was saving on petrol i was saving on takeaways i was saving gym fees i was saving so many fees that i'm currently incurring now but at that time you know, understand i was accumulating wealth and i i kind of was smart i guess about how i wanted to go about my savings because i understood the value of a rand and understanding that i was a young mom in a professional corporate world i was not going to now start forgetting that i've got a child i've got a fiance back home i've got bills to pay so what i did is i started saving my money in 2020 now it might be a bit difficult in 2022 because of the fact that the streets are open what is a lockdown? What is it? It doesn't exist anymore, right? And people are splurging and are trying to like live life. And I'm not saying you shouldn't live life. It is your finances, but you need to be smart about your future. You need to be smart about how you're saving. So what I did is I actually did an emergency fund where I deposited a certain amount of money every month. And I also took a portion of my money and gave it to an investment firm and basically what they do is that they invest on share indexes on my behalf and it accumulates on that side so for me i thought to myself and i still know and accept the fact that a salary is not going to sustain your way of life now or in the future i feel like even now i need more money <laughs> Like every day I need more money because the salary is not enough. I believe in seven streams of income. And so a little bit here, a little bit there is something that you need to consider. And even though you might ask the question like, let's go with what time? Like, how am I going to be earning seven streams of income? If you had to take all the time that you spend on your phone, watching TV, having conversations with people unnecessarily, I'm not saying you shouldn't have friends, but every day with your friends, like we're already working. Like if you're not working, you already have like 24 hours in the day. You can't tell me that all of those hours are dedicated to your friends, you know? So kind of understanding that time is something that you can use on your behalf when you are accumulating wealth at a very young age and also alleviating that pressure to want to say that because you're a young professional, I need to be in the best clothing i need to have the best car i need to be at the best places i need to show people that you know i am within this corporate life it's really not necessary for you to be putting that pressure on yourself but i believe you should be saving as much as you can another thing was that because i am a young mom i get this question asked a lot how do you do it like how are you surviving and to be honest with you, it's just a situation where mentally you kind of have to be very strong about intentional living and not necessarily allow FOMO or um, the pressures of the world to get to you a bit too much. Last year, I actually even started going to therapy because my daughter was about to start preschool. And honestly, financially, I was like, where's this money going to come from? Like everything was just getting overwhelming and surviving doesn't mean you don't get days where you are overwhelmed you kind of learn to manage what you can and things that you can't control you just give it to god and you go sleep so how i decided um to survive my corporate world is number one i made the sacrifice of not living with my daughter number two i sacrificed my um 
creative side if i can call it that so i am a full-blown employee from monday to friday i commit 100 percent to my job i do not leave any room of doubt that i'm not equipped enough to do my job and then from friday to sunday i respect my time as a as a fiance as a mother and i i commit myself you know i enjoy the things that i do when i do have the time and i don't think about how much i'm losing out on because it will get to you if you are in your head all the time and you're thinking about all the things that you are losing out on i make sure that i i speak to my friends when i can i do explain to them the situation that i'm not always available or accessible but with the little time that i do get to to speak with my friends i do make the time I spend a lot of time speaking to God, asking him to send to me, asking him to literally give me favor in every room that I walk into because of the fact that I do understand that if you are like having this, I'm on the go, I have different hats, I'm a mom, I'm a employee, I'm a fiance, it does get a lot, it does get a lot. So I do ask God to put his hand on me and put favor on me that even if I don't do 10 times what other people are doing. If I'm doing the one, the circle is going to get noticed, you know, because it's not easy wanting to always go 100% at everything, knowing the fact that you are juggling a lot. And it's not easy, but I think with the support of my family, the support of my friends, the support of my employer, the fact that I understand character and not necessarily relying on my reputation i actually learned this um quote from i think it was a movie i don't know what i was watching but they said um reputation is what people think of you but character is who you are and so i spend a lot of my time building up my character affirming myself of who i am what i like what i don't like what i need what i don't need and i literally go through that drooling exercise to literally face myself every day and i think people what they do is they distract themselves either with a with like spending time with friends or going out in the streets or substances or i don't know instagram tiktok like people have different vices but you can decide when enough is enough right when this rat race of life gets a bit too much you kind of need to look at yourself and start having those necessary conversations with yourself. And I do a lot of that. Now, again, being in corporate requires you to actually also have thick skin. And I don't believe that everyone is born with thick skin. I don't believe I was born with thick skin, but I had a really good idea of what thick skin looks like. I have a very powerful dad who says what what's on his mind he doesn't filter anything he's very passionate when he speaks and it's so funny when i'm not in his presence right i think i i, I embody him and when i'm with him i'm just kind of like relax like who are you why are you so forthcoming and so surrounding yourself with people that are thick-skinned people that are thriving people that are determined people that are successful people that are focused in their life is something that you will also start picking up on and i'm not saying that it's going to come in a day or two days or a month it requires years it requires consistency it requires you to also step out of your mind to know when great people are within your presence like i think sometimes we miss a lot of opportunities because we don't realize on a daily basis who we are around and we kind of look to social media or look to i don't know influences to tell us who we should be around but anyone around you can say something that is going to like set your trajectory to a hundred but not to make this video too long corporate can be great <laughs> Corporate is great for a lot of people. For myself, would I stay? Um, I feel like that's an interesting question to have posed to me because it's been something that I've also been tussling with. I've learned quite a lot. I have um, obtained skills that I never, never in my wildest dreams 
thought I would get. So from that perspective, 100%, I would stay. But I think for the person that I am and the sacrifices that I've made, the biggest one with not living with my daughter has actually been something that in my in my future I would like to correct and I would like to have her more around me. So it's not for everyone. <laughs> I don't want to lie to you and tell you that it is for everyone. But you do meet amazing people. I've met amazing friends, amazing leaders. I've been in amazing meetings. I've been in amazing situations that for me, when I look back now, I think to myself, how blessed am I to have been around such people and to be around such such rooms full of like intellect and power. And I'm like, damn, girl, like you're doing something right. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe and to turn on that notification bell to know when my next video will be. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. You know. I, 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 I.